we can actually use this term, the uh, the residual sum of squares, as a a summary measure of the amount of error in our regression line. So we, all we are doing here, remember, RSS equals the sum of the residuals, EI squared, the sum of the residuals squared. So all we've done here is instead of EI squared, we've plugged in for EI what the residual is, because the residual equals YI minus y hat i. So we've just plugged that in over here, and now we have the um, this quantity. This quantity is just the sum of all the squared residuals. So when the sum of squared residuals is high, our model isn't very good, and when the sum of squared residuals is low, our model is doing better. In either case, uh, we are going to choose a regression line based on the fact that it will be the line that minimizes the residual sum of squares. So this is just the, the optimization problem that we have. So we want to select regression coefficients a and b, so the constant and the slope, such that we're minimizing the, res the residual sum of squares. The residual sum of squares is just the sum of yi minus y hat squared. But remember that y hat is just a plus bx. So we sub a plus bx into this equation down here. And now we have to solve this optimization problem. And now optimization and solving this problem is beyond the scope of the class, but using some Simple calculus and taking some derivatives of this equation, we're able to come up with deterministic equations for A and B given a sample of points xi and yi. By solving the optimization problem, we end up with deterministic equations for the regression coefficients, the slope, b, and the constant, a. Let's look at the equation of the slope to see what's going on. You should notice that it's something very similar to the correlation coefficient, the Pearson correlation coefficient. The numerator, in fact, is exactly the same. All we have here is the sum of the cross product terms. So when x and y are positively correlated, we'll see that, this, that the cross product term will be positive and the sum of the cross products will be positive, resulting in a positive slope. And if x and y are negative re negatively related, then these cross product terms will be negative, and the sum of the cross products will provide a negative slope, a b less than 0. The denominator here is just the sum of the uh, square deviations of x, the total sum of squares for x. And this is just used to standardize the cross products here, to make it in terms of the scale of the x variable. A nice way to think about this coefficient here is that recall that b is equal to the rise over the run. So in a sense, we have the rise on top divided by the run on the bottom. Only, we're not actually talking about distances in y divided by distances in x. Or rather, on top we have the covariance between x and y, which is giving us a measure of rise, divided by the variance in x, which is giving us a measure of run. Once we have our estimate of b worked out, then we can use that in our equation for the constant. And the constant here is equal to y bar, that's just the mean y value in our sample, minus b times x bar. So we're using this b over here, plugging it in over here. y bar and x bar are just going to be calculated from our sample data.